Welcome back to part two of the Kamigawa set sneak peek for the 3rd of February. We have two more days of this to do, which is awesome. We're going to do green cards, which is where we left off. That's where we're going to pick it up with some caffeine. And you already know I'm excited about this. So, we're going to start with the Blossom Prancer, a 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, Spirit and Reach that when it enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or enchantment card from among them and put it into your hand. The rest will go in the bottom of your library in a random order, and if you didn't put a card into your hand this way, you get to gain four life. So this is about as scrying as a green deck can get, especially since my idea for, for the best green combo is green-white. This is as close to scrying as you're going to get, probably. Aside from that one white mana saga enchantment that allows you to scry. So a 4-4 with reach is good. That's more of a 4 mana card than a 5 mana card. So in my mind, a 4-4 reach is worth 4 mana. And so for that extra mana, you're getting to look at the top 5 cards of your, of your deck and choose an enchantment or a creature card that is worth essentially more than 4 life points. Because if you don't like them all that much, you can choose to put them all to the bottom of your library and gain 4 life instead. So the extra mana, it's either 1 mana after having a 4-4 four, four with reach on the board, pay 1 extra mana to gain 4 life, or it's pay 1 extra mana, look at the top 5 cards, put the best one into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library. Essentially, because for a green deck, you're running a lot of enchantments, and you're running a lot of creatures. I don't see you running a ton of artifacts in a green-white, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Because of course, if you drew an artifact card from the top 5 cards, you cannot choose that card. You can't choose an instant or sorcery either, but I think, again, most of what you're running, I think, are creatures and enchantments. So this does really well in that deck. So you're looking at five cards, almost all of them you should be able to put in your hand. I think the, the real downside is if you're looking at lands, and there's not a whole lot you can do about that. But there's a lot of green cards that pull lands from your deck, and if that's the case, I think as long as you're pulling them out, you shouldn't be having all five of them as lands. But the... Part of the cards are going to do what they're going to do. You just have to plan as best as you can with the cards you've got. And for one mana, I think you're looking at at least three of those cards are cards you could put in your hand. Maybe one's an instant or a sorcery. Maybe one's a land. So for choose the best of the three cards, even if that's the scenario we're looking at here, you pick one to put in your hand. And if you can't, I think this is still worthwhile for the four life. So, and you're getting rid of the five cards too. Keep in mind, they're not going back on top of your deck. They're going on the bottom of your deck. So this has enormous value for what you're paying for it. It would be an okay card as a 4 mana 4-4 four, four with reach. That extra mana makes it not so good, and then it pops in that effect. That makes it way better. I think that effect probably would be worth... I think it's probably worth 2 mana, which almost makes me evaluate this card as, as a 3 mana 4-4 four, four with reach, and then 2 extra mana for this other effect that you have to pay for. So... Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. This is a really good card, and it certainly goes into the deck I'm trying to build. Alright. The next green card is the Boon of Baz Bazaiju. A 2-mana instant. Target creature gets plus X, plus X until the end of the turn, where X is the greatest mana value among permanents that you control, and you untap it. This is a good card, especially for green. It doesn't go in the deck I want to go into, because this is not a modification it's not a counter that it's giving it it's just plus x plus x until the end of the turn so since it's not modifying the card it's really only useful because i'm untapping a creature that i want to untap but i don't think that even with that it's not worth it to run this instant in the deck and especially if you're running cards like blossom prancer we just talked about then you have to be a lot more stingy you you got to be more specific about what instance you're putting in and what sorcerers you're putting into your deck that way you're not devaluing other cards that are allowing you to pull enchantments and creatures out. So this doesn't fit in that deck. But overall, just looking at this card, is a good card. 2 mana, plus X, plus X. In a green deck, you're running probably some high value cards. I will only say that the green deck this certainly doesn't fit into is also an elf deck, which is usually a very popular deck, but they're almost always low mana costs. I think some of the highest elf cards I've seen are 4 mana. Uh, 2 mana plus 4 plus 4 and untap a creature isn't bad, but most elves tend to be around 2 mana. So plus 2 plus 2 for 2 mana isn't great. 
So you want to at least get it to be a plus three, plus three. So just evaluate your deck before you put this in that. But overall, the card's not bad. It just doesn't fit well with modifying cards. All right. And that moves us to Coiling Stalker, a two mana Snake Ninja, two one, a ninjutsu of two mana. So it's the same ninjutsu mana cost as its mana cost is. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control that doesn't have a plus one plus one counter on it. That's amazing. This combo's. I mean, it's not. It's going in my spirit deck, even though it's a, it's a ninja. It, it's that good of a card. You're. I don't need to. I don't have to ninja to this out. But guaranteeing that combat damage is good. But I don't need to do that. I've paid two mana. Establish a, a threat that's just a two one. They're gonna want to kill that card because if it does deal combat damage, I'm gonna modify a creature that hasn't yet been modified. And my cards that are comboing with my creatures, the modified creatures that I control, it doesn't matter how big these creatures get, what matters is how many creatures I have that are modified. So what this is doing is saying, oh you have a creature that's not modified yet? Let me fix that. So that's really good. I think this combo is super well in that deck. It's also not bad for, for a ninja card. The problem is that nin green ninjas, I'm not seeing a lot, I'm not, I'm not seeing enough ninjas to justify a ninja deck with green cards. So I think that's the only downside to this being a ninja. But it's a good enough card where I'm running it in a deck where it almost has no synergy. So I definitely think it's a good card. Just didn't have to be a ninja, I think. And the ninjutsu ability, I won't be using it in my deck. But I, it's, it's definitely good because it guarantees the combat damage. So you at least get that effect one time. But for me and my strategy of how I play my deck, I don't need it to actually have its effect go off. I just need my opponent to really not want that to happen, enough to where they'd be willing to kill a little 2-1 that only costs me 2 mana. So that's what I need it for. Alright, and now we get to look at the shrine for the green deck. We've seen, I think, all the shrines for the other colors now. So the green one is called Go Shentai of Boundless Vigor, a 2 mana shrine that is a 1-1 one, one with Trample, and at the beginning of your end step, you may pay a mana, and if you do, you put a plus one plus one counter on target shrine for each shrine that you control. I like this card because it modifies itself, and I only need it to do that one time. So for essentially three mana, I'm playing this card. The third mana is not getting paid until the end, my end step, but for three mana essentially, I'm getting a one one, well what's gonna end up being a two two, one of which is a plus one plus one counter. So I'm playing a modified creature and then I don't care about it anymore. It's just sitting there being a modified creature. Is that too slow for the deck that I'm trying to run? Is it too slow for most other decks? It could be. The trample definitely incentivizes you playing with a bunch of other shrines. So I definitely think this is meant to combo better with your other shrines. But it may be worth it to put into your deck just because it modifies itself. Because it counts as a shrine, so you're paying one mana, and it's at least giving itself a plus one plus one. Because it says, for each shrine you control and not for each other shrine you control that you get a plus one plus one counter so for that reason it at least gives itself a plus one plus one modifi modifi modification so it's definitely a worthwhile card to run in a deck that cares about modifications it other than that it's not a good card i don't think you run it in a most green decks i don't think you run it in most decks if you're not running it in a deck that cares about modifications you have to run it in a deck that cares about shrines so, that's my take on this card. I like it. Overall, though, not a very good card. Next up, we look at Air the Ancient Fang, a 3-mana Snake Samurai, a 2-3, that when he enters the battlefield, he enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter if you control a modified creature. So this is really good for my Spirit Samurai combo deck modification situation. I think that... For my deck, it's almost certainly a 3 mana 3-4, three, one of which is a plus one plus one counter. And it's a samurai, so when other samurai warriors attack alone, I might have other effects happening at the same time. So this is a really good samurai card. I definitely think that there's a deck it fits in. I think it's the right color. I thought most of the samurais I'd want to run in my combo deck were going to come from the white side of things. I thought my spirits were going to be green, and I thought my samurai would be white. But I toss this in there as my Samurai that's a green card. I think it fits really well. So, I like it. And I only need one other modified creature for the effect to happen, by the way. I mean, it's, it's almost certainly happening then. Especially in my deck. 
And I think if you run it in any samurai deck, that's happening. All these other samurais are giving each other counters and doing crazy things when they're attacking alone. So I definitely think this is a 3 mana, 3-4 three, card that counts as being modified by itself. So good card. Alright, that moves us to our legendary dragon spirit for the green deck. So it's a 5 mana dragon spirit, 4-4 four, four with flying and with death touch. And when it dies, you choose one of two effects. The first one, search your library for up to three land cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand and shuffle your library. Or create an XX green spirit creature token where X is the number of lands that you control. So the second effect is the second of the death effects. Isn't all that good? But the first one is pretty good. It's a five mana card. So for five mana, you're getting four, four flying death touch. Of course, that's already good. And searching library for the three land cards, putting them in your hand, is good for a couple reasons. One, it gets those lands out of your deck. And two, maybe you're saving up to play more cards. I don't know for sure if you are, but maybe. And I think that that makes this card pretty good. I don't know for sure if I run it in my favorite deck that I want to do, my Spirit Samurai deck. Even though this is a Spirit, it doesn't really combo well with modifying. Which is a real shame to see. I really wanted to see the Dragon Spirit that modified stuff. Or that its effect comboed with modified cards. Didn't happen. Maybe it would have been too strong. So I don't get to run it in my deck. Darn it. But it is a good card. I definitely think you see play. Just not in my deck. Alright, the next one is the March card for the green deck. Which is March of Burgeoning Life. It is a 1 mana and then X mana. So it's 1 green and then you tap X instant card as an additional cost you can exile green cards from your hand to reduce the cost of this by two colorless mana per card you've exiled that way and it allows you to choose target creature with a mana value less than whatever x was and you can search your library for a creature card with the same name as that creature and put it on the battlefield tapped and then shuffle so you're essentially for one extra mana you're paying the mana cost plus one of a card you already have on the board and you want to get the other one out that has the same name. That's really that's a really good card. Of course it's better because it doesn't tell you it can't be a legendary card, but keep in mind you can only have one legendary creature on the board at a time unless you have the mirror box artifact card we talked about earlier for three mana, the legendary rule doesn't apply to you. So you're probably not pulling out a legendary card, you're probably pulling out a another card that buffs up or is affected by having modified creatures when it enters the battlefield. It's a good card, and it's worth it to run in, I know in my deck, it's worth it to run, I think, I think you run this in any green deck. It's hard for me to see a green deck you don't run this in. Well, I suppose except for commander format. Keep in mind, in commander format, you can only have one copy of every card in your deck, except for basic lands. So this would be a terrible card to run in commander. But, I don't think it was made with for keeping Commander in mind. And I think, aside from Commander format, this is a fantastic card. And it's an auto-include in any green deck. And I'm happy to finally see a March card that I actually enjoy. So, I was less than enthused about our Dragon Spirit for my specific deck, but it was a good card. This card is definitely going to see play a couple cards, at least a couple copies of this card at least, in my deck. And I think an auto-include in any green deck. All right, next is Orochi Merge Keeper, a two mana snake druid, a one one. You can tap it to add a green mana to your mana pool, and as long as this card is modified, you tap it for two green mana. That's not bad. I'm, I'm almost certainly modifying all the cards I'm putting on the board in my modification deck, but it doesn't, it doesn't combo super well with modified cards. It's really good early in the game if you pay it for, if you pay two mana for this card, it still produces a green mana for you, which is pretty standard for two mana green cards these days. I think it tapping for an extra mana when modified is okay. I don't know, I feel like maybe it's just a little too slow for a modification deck, but it's your way of getting extra mana, especially since your modification deck may or may not be including elves, because you don't have to run my little samurai spirit modification deck. You could do a Spirit Elf modification deck, and I think that would do pretty well. You're pulling Elves from other sets, though, so that's better for people who have been playing Magic for a little bit. But just looking at this set, and this card in particular, I think a 2-mana 1-1 one, one, to have it for a green mana is good, but for the most part, you're running an Elf or an Elf deck if you're doing cards like this. So I think maybe it's just a little too slow. Next, we look at 
Roaring Earth for two mana. It is a two mana enchantment that whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or vehicle that you control. And you can also channel this. So if you tap two green and X amount of mana, discard this card, you can put X plus one plus one counters on target land that you control, and it becomes a zero zero spirit creature with haste that's still considered a land. And of course, you've put counters on it, so it's a modified land, creature, spirit, everything. <laughs> so this is a great card. This is an auto-include in my deck for sure. I can keep modifying every time I play a land. Yeah, that's happening. And if I already have a ton of lands and I don't think I'm going to be playing a lot more, then I'll just channel this and at least modify one card and make it a big green card. And it counts as a modified card still. So I run a couple copies of this in my deck for sure, if not four copies of this in my deck if I can get a hold of them. So, Roaring Earth, big thumbs up for me. Alright, next up. That brings us to Shigeki Jukai Visionary. A 2 mana Snake Druid, Legendary Enchantment Creature, a 1 power 3 toughness. Pay 2 mana, tap this card, and return it to your hand. And it allows you to reveal the top 4 cards of your library. And you can put a land from among them onto the battlefield tapped, and the rest go into your graveyard. Which sounds like a bummer, but it has a channel ability. While this card stays, and remember, every time you activate that effect, this card goes back to your hand. Channel, tap two green mana, and then two X value cards, and discard this card to return X target non legendary cards from your graveyard to your hand. So it requires a minimum of two for the value of X. I think, I think this is a really good card doesn't really fit in my idea for what I'm going to do for my deck, but this is a good card. Especially because it keeps returning itself to your hand, so you can always activate that channel when you're ready. And it's the one that's been putting stuff into your graveyard, so it goes back to your hand, you're like, yeah, okay, I'm ready to pull some stuff out because I discarded some good stuff. Let me just go ahead and get them all into my hand that I like. So, this is a good card. I definitely see this getting a lot of play, just not in my deck. Alright. And finally, that brings us to... Our Artifact Creature Equipment Spider, which is a 3 mana 1-4 with reach. Already, lo without looking at the rest of the effects, a 3 mana 1-4 with reach is just a little slow. Usually you want to play a 3 mana 2-4. The card is Giant Spider. That's the card you run for 3 mana, but for 4 additional mana you can reconfigure this to give Equip Creature plus 1 plus 4 and reach. And keep in mind, this counts as modifying your creatures. I know we haven't talked a lot about equipments being modifiers, but an equipment counts as a modification. So, giving a creature reach, giving it plus one, plus four, and it counts as modifying the card, might be enough to run this in a deck that I'm trying to run it in. And I'll certainly give it a try, because I don't think there's a lot of reach samurais, and there's definitely not a lot of flying samurais, so I think this is good. It kind of helps offset that cost of what kind of deck I'm running, and it helps me have an answer to flying decks. So I run maybe three copies of this card, and then maybe two. I'm gonna probably start with three if I can get a hold of them. But you run three copies of this in that deck, it's good. Other than that though, evaluating this on its own, if it didn't so happen to fit in my modification deck, it's not a good card. Three mana, one fourth reach isn't good. And adding the reconfigure to that cost, if you're playing it just to equip, is a seven mana equip creature gets plus one, plus four, and also reach, definitely not good. So. The card on its own is bad, but it happens to combo well with my deck. And that moves us to multicolored card. We only have one card to talk about for the multicolored set. That's for this set. Aishin Two Heavens is one. It's a three mana card, but all the mana, one must be red, one must be white, and one must be black. It's a three, four legendary human samurai. And if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent that you control to trigger, then that ability will trigger an additional time. This is amazing in a samurai deck because you've got a lot of samurai that says whenever a samurai or warrior attacks alone, this thing happens. So yeah, your creature attacking will be causing more than one triggered ability to happen, and each one of those triggered abilities will be happening twice now instead of just once. That makes this card really good, and I think it would be even better if it was a red-white. But the fact that you have to have a red, white, and black mana that paid for this makes this a lot more difficult of a card to run. I don't think that you run this in a red, white, black deck. I don't think that you're making a red, white, black deck. I think what's happening is, is that you're running it in a red, white deck 
the red white vehicle deck with samurai and i think you're just trying to figure out how to produce black mana in a red white deck i think that's what's happening which makes this an incredibly slow card but to be honest this is in my opinion absolutely still worth it to play if you can figure out how you can get that black mana because this is worth it and it's a must run in any samurai deck but specifically the red white because how are you going to produce a red white and black mana if it's not in at least one of those decks so this is a must run in a samurai deck let's figure out how to make that work that's the only multicolored card that we have to talk about now that moves us to artifacts we only have one to talk about for the artifact set as well the card is reckoner bankbuster a two mana vehicle a four four that whenever it enters the battlefield it enters with three charge counters on it and if you tap two mana tap this card and remove one of those charge counters from it you get to draw a card and then if there are no more charge counters left on it when you've activated this ability then you create a treasure token and a 1-1 colorless pilot creature token that can pilot vehicles as though it has two power greater and this vehicle itself has a crew three so it creates its own pilot eventually which is very slow but it's a 4-4 still lets you draw a card every turn for two mana and you just tap this card that's really good I think this is definitely good and it's an auto include into a vehicle deck it just the pilot it creates is a bit slow but that's all right it does it does a lot on its own and even without it being a vehicle when it's an artifact and it, if it doesn't count as a creature yet that's perfectly fine you're using this ability every turn if you can so i like it so that moves us to our land cards we've actually got two land cards to talk about today the first one being mech hanger it's a tap this land for a colorless mana or tap this for one mana of any color so long as it's being spent to cast a pilot or vehicle spell or tap it tap three mana and tap this and then target vehicle will become an artifact creature until end of turn what that means is is that for three mana and a tap this land it automatically pilots one of your vehicles for you that's what that means when a when an art when a vehicle becomes an artifact creature it means it's being piloted so this is a great land and it's a must run in any vehicle deck no matter what color deck you're running it with so i love it next up and last land that we're talking about is roadside reliquary it taps for a colorless mana or you tap two mana and tap this and sacrifice it to draw a card if you control an artifact and draw a card if you control an enchantment so this definitely goes in the ninja blue black deck because you're almost certainly going to be controlling artifacts and enchantments there this probably goes in vehicle decks as well where the artifact will be pretty simple to have and the with the saga enchantments you may be running quite a few of the enchantments in that deck as well but it certainly goes in a ninja deck that's what i i see this being easy run in a ninja deck so i like this land and it's a must include and since it's uh, since it's not a legendary land you can have multiple copies of it on the board at the same time that makes it even better you probably run in a ninja deck at least four of these you run four of these and in a vehicle deck probably two maybe three the colorless mana takes away from it a little bit keep in mind the vehicles are colorless mana usually but if you're running in a color deck just keep in mind this is only producing you a colorless mana so it's a lot better to produce that colorless mana earlier in the game when you when you just need the extra mana and then just sacrifice this for two card draw since you're paying two mana and tapping it and sacrificing it two mana card draw draw two cards that's incredibly valuable for even a blue deck which is very used to drawing cards all right next that moves us to our saga cards we only have one to talk about tales of master Cicero. it is a five mana card it's when you first play it and on your next turn it has the same effect so twice you'll be putting a plus one plus one counter on target creature or vehicle that you control and it gains vigilance until the end of the turn and then on the turn where it transforms it will transform into Cicero's living legacy it is a 5-5 snake warrior of course an enchantment creature with vigilance and haste this is a great card for five mana it does end up being a bit slow but it's allowing you to modify creatures and give them vigilance on the first two turns and then it turns it it also gives you a card that is probably worth the card is giving you at the end is certainly worth five mana five mana five five vigilance and haste that's absolutely worth it you do have to wait a little bit to get it out so this is very slow if you're not running it in a deck that's good with modifying cards then this isn't a good card it ends up being pretty slow but because it fits really well in the deck i want to run 
I'll, I'll definitely be running this. It counts as an enchantment, so it, it pops off a lot of other effects that combos well, especially in green-white, where you get to pull enchantments from your graveyard. That's really awesome. And also with the lore card that we talked about yesterday, I believe, where you can return enchantments from the board to your hand and be able to replay them. So this is a really good card. Ends up being too slow in any other deck, though, but a must run in your modification deck. With that being said, that's all the cards that we have for today. That's the sneak peek into Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Don't forget it comes out on the 18th, so let's get excited about it. We've got two more days of sneak peeks, and I'm excited for each of them. So I'll see you in each of those. Drop a comment down below on any of these cards that I've talked about, ones that you're excited about, ones that you think I maybe got wrong, that I thought were maybe not so good, that you think could be good, and tell me some deck ideas you've got. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.